Hey everyone, welcome to your deep dive. Oh, this is gonna be a good one. You know those amazing films by yeah. Christopher Nolan? Yeah. The no. ones that just like stick with you long after you've seen them? Absolutely. We're gonna dive deep into those. Of it. Unpack all those hidden meanings. The symbolism. Exactly. Yeah. The stuff that like makes you appreciate them on a whole other level. It's there, trust me. It's all there. Oh yeah, for sure. We're gonna focus on like four of his biggest films today. Okay. Inception, okay. Interstellar, classic. The Prestige, another great one. And of course, oh here we go, the iconic Dark Knight trilogy. All right, let's do it. So Inception, right. right, yeah. On the surface, it's this awesome heist movie, dreams within dreams, right. But what I find so fascinating is how Nolan uses the dream world to kind of mirror the creative process itself. Oh, you're so right. You see. The characters themselves embody different aspects of filmmaking. Ooh, I like this. Cobb, the dream extractor, he's like the director. He's manipulating that dreamscape. That's so true. Ariadne, the architect, she constructs the dream world. So she's kind of like the production designer, right? Yeah. And then you have Arthur mm -hmm. making sure the plan runs smoothly. He's like the producer in a way. That's such a cool way to look at it. And then there's Cobb's personal struggle, you know. With his guilt and loss, represented by Mal, his wife, who keeps popping up in his dreams. Right, right. It's more than just a heist, isn't it? Each dream layer is like a visual representation of Cobb battling his past demons, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. trying to let go of the pain. Exactly. And just like Cobb, we're left questioning reality at the film's very end. That spinning top, it just keeps spinning. Is he still dreaming? <laughs> right. Did he make it back to reality? Nolan leaves us hanging. He wants us to ponder that very nature of reality. Oh, man. So, it's so brilliant how he does that. It makes you think. It does. What do you yeah. think? Is it about Cobb finding peace, or are we, the viewers, left in a dreamlike state? All right, so let's move on to Interstellar. Okay. We're going from, like, the depths of the subconscious to the vastness of space. Whoa. Big jump. Right. And on one level, it's this grand sci-fi adventure. Humanity's search for a new home. Exactly. But at its heart, it's also a deeply personal story about a father and his daughter. The love between them. That's the core of it. And how that love can transcend like time and space. Oh, absolutely. Time and space are distorted, manipulated throughout the film. Right. Yet Cooper's love for his daughter Murph yeah. That remains a constant. It's what drives him. It's the driving force of the whole film. It leads to the resolution, even. That scene on the water planet. Oh, that one gets me every time. Right, where Cooper watches years pass on Earth in just a few hours. Time dilation. He's aging slower than everyone back home. And he's just desperate to get back to his daughter. Knowing every moment he spends there is years of her life just slipping away. Remember what Bran says. Which line? She says, love is the one thing we're capable of perceiving that transcends dimensions of time and space. Wow. That's not just a random line. Right. It's the core idea of the whole film. Nolan is suggesting love is powerful enough to bridge even the most impossible distances, even time and space. It's like love is the key to solving the whole crisis. It really is. Even when faced with the potential end of everything, it's the connection between people, the love that binds them, that could hold the key to survival. That's pretty profound when you think about it. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let's go from the vastness of space to the shadowy world of the prestige. Ah, yes. Magicians and illusions. We have two rival magicians, uh -huh. Anger and Borden, totally obsessed with creating the ultimate illusion. And that rivalry consumes them, leads them down a dark path. Deception, obsession, yep. tragedy. But what's really interesting is how the film itself is structured like one of their magic tricks. Oh, tell me more. It follows those three acts of a magic performance. The pledge, the turn, and the prestige. Yes. No one keeps us guessing just like an audience at a magic show. It's brilliant. He's playing with her perception, just like a magician would. And then there's this whole idea of duality running through the film. Oh, absolutely. Both Anger and Borden have these hidden lives, secret identities. It makes us question what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. Blurs the lines between reality and illusion. Just like their magic tricks. We think we understand what's happening, but there's always something hidden. The secret. That changes how we see things. It's all about perspective. And beyond all the spectacle, Nolan explores the cost of obsession. Right. These two guys sacrifice their personal lives. Relationships. Their morals. Everything. All in pursuit of greatness. And it makes us ask ourselves, 
How much are we willing to sacrifice for our own dreams? What lines are we willing to cross for success? It's such a thought-provoking question, and it's a theme that pops up a lot in Nolan's films. It really does. Now, how about we move on to the Dark Knight trilogy? This is where things get really dark and intense. Yes. They took the superhero genre to a whole other level. Completely. They're about justice. Yeah. This fight to maintain order when everything's falling apart. These aren't just superhero movies. They're like philosophical explorations of what it means to be human. Oh, I love that. So true. You see, it's not just Batman fighting criminals. It's a battle between order and chaos. Embodied in the conflict between Batman and the Joker. The Joker is the embodiment of chaos. He doesn't want money or power. He wants to expose how fragile society is to show that even the most civilized world can crumble. And Batman, the symbol of order, is constantly being tested by the Joker's actions. He's got to confront the darkness inside himself to make those tough choices and protect Gotham. It's a battle for Gotham's soul. The Joker's line, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Well, that's a classic. It foreshadows what happens to Harvey Dent, and it highlights that internal struggle that Bruce Wayne faces throughout all three films. He's constantly walking that tightrope. And then the Dark Knight Rises kicks it up a notch. Bane's uprising is like a full-on attack on Gotham's order. Bruce Wayne has to overcome so much physically and emotionally to save the city. Talk about resilience. He never gives up. <laughs> It's a testament to the power of hope, even when things seem impossible. It really is. Nolan is showing us that even in the darkest times, there's always hope. And that's a powerful message. It's amazing how Nolan uses this superhero story to examine those big questions about what it means to be human, the choices we make, and the struggle between good and evil. He does it so well. And throughout the trilogy, that idea of self-sacrifice for the greater good keeps coming up. Right. Batman's willing to give up his own happiness, his own identity even, to protect Gotham. It raises a huge question for all of us. What are we willing to endure for others? What does it truly mean to be a hero? What would we sacrifice for the greater good? It's something to think about. You know, it's amazing how he takes these genres like sci-fi or thrillers yeah. and uses them to explore these big philosophical ideas. Yeah. Like, he doesn't shy away from making us think about reality or time yeah. or what it means to be human, but... He does it in a way that's still so entertaining. Yeah, I yeah. know. And visually stunning. Yeah. Like, think about Inception. Yeah. He could have made it a straight-up action movie. Totally. But instead, he's like, let's add dreams and the subconscious. Yeah. And the power of the mind. And he makes this whole incredible world that just sucks you in. He's such a master at that. He is. Like, yeah. blending the big spectacle yeah. with everything actual substance mm -hmm. like think about it those okay. amazing visuals yeah the crazy special effects mm -hmm. they aren't just there for show yeah. they make you feel like you're really there totally so we can engage with these ideas without feeling like we're in school or something it's true it's like he's sneaking in these deep concepts while we're just enjoying the ride exactly and speaking of mind games Ooh. let's go back to the prestige for a minute okay it's like a magic trick in itself yeah. The way he messes with our heads uh -huh. keeps us guessing until the very end. It's true. That's that true. structure, yeah. the pledge, the turn, the prestige, uh -huh. it's not an accident. He's doing that on purpose. Like a magician. Exactly. Yeah. Misdirecting our attention. Mm -hmm. Revealing just enough to keep us hooked, yeah. but hiding the truth. Right in front of us. Right. And it's not just about the plot twists either. No. It's about ambition, mm. rivalry, Yeah. what we'll sacrifice for our dreams. Those two magicians. Yes, Angier and Borden. Yeah. They get so caught up in their competition. They do. That they forget about being human. It's like a warning. It is. About what happens when you're too ambitious. Like, is it really worth it? Right. To lose your morals. Your relationship for success. Makes you think, huh? Yeah, like, where do we draw the line? When does ambition become dangerous? It's something that comes up a lot in his films. It does. You see so many of his characters, they have these internal struggles. Yeah, they're flawed. Exactly. They make mistakes. Yeah, like Bruce Wayne in The Dark Knight. Oh, yeah. He's trying to do good, mm -hmm. but it gets blurry. The line between hero and vigilante. Right. And then you have Cobb in Inception. Yeah. Cooper in Interstellar. Mm hmm they're haunted by their past. They want to make things right. Redemption. Yeah. They're all making tough choices. Just trying to figure things out. In a world that's... Yeah. 
Well, it's uh, complicated. Yeah, it's messy. It's like Nolan is saying that being strong mm -hmm. isn't about being perfect. Yeah. It's about owning your flaws. Learning from your mistakes. Yeah, and trying to be better. It's a message that resonates with everyone. It does. Like, it doesn't matter if you're fighting crime yeah. or just dealing with life. We all face challenges. Exactly, and it's how we handle those challenges. That defines us. Yeah. And even though his films are so big and epic, mm -hmm. he never forgets about the human side of things. That's what makes them so powerful. It is. It's the emotional core of his stories. You connect with these characters. You feel what they feel. Yeah. Their pain. Their joy. Yeah, their losses. It makes us care about what happens to them. Even when you're dealing with crazy stuff. Black holes. Dreams within dreams. It makes it all feel real. <laughs> Relatable. Like, even though it's science fiction. Yeah. It's still about human connection. But like, think about Cooper in Interstellar. Okay. Desperate to get back to his daughter. Yeah. Or Cobb in Inception, okay. trying to let go of his guilt. Those are human stories. It's that we can all understand. They anchor the films. Give them weight. Exactly. And it's not just about individual characters either. Yeah. Nolan also tackles these bigger themes. About what it means to be alive. Exactly. Lost exactly. hope in the face of adversity. Those are things we all experience. They're universal. And they make his films so impactful. They stay with you. Long after you've seen them. Yeah. So looking back at these four films, mm -hmm. what can we learn from Christopher Nolan? He's not just a director. No, he's like a philosopher with a camera. Yeah. He makes us think critically. He questions our reality. Makes us look for deeper meaning. His films are like puzzles. With so many layers. You can interpret them in different ways. He doesn't give us all the answers. No. He wants us to figure things out for ourselves. He wants us to engage with the material. Yeah, and come to our own conclusion. Well, it's like he's inviting us on this journey. An intellectual adventure. Yeah. To find meaning in a world that can feel so chaotic. And even though we might see things differently, yeah. that's okay. It's the discussion. The sharing of ideas. That makes it so rewarding. And as we wrap things up with Christopher Nolan, yeah. I think it's important to remember mm -hmm. that this is just the start. Of the journey. Yeah. His films, they're so packed with symbolism and meaning. Layers and layers. You can watch them again and again. And find something new each time. Totally. It's like... Every viewing can give you a different perspective. That's what makes his work so special. Yeah. He doesn't spell everything out for us. He doesn't tie it all up in a nice little bow. Mm. He trusts us as viewers yeah. to engage with his films, to yeah. put the pieces together ourselves. And form our own understanding. Exactly. He's not afraid of ambiguity. No. He wants us to think for ourselves. It's like he's saying, come on, let's go on this adventure together. Yeah. Let's search for meaning in this crazy world. And even if we don't all agree on the answers. That's okay. The journey itself. The discussions. Yeah, sharing our perspectives. That's what makes it so rewarding. As you keep watching his films, mm -hmm. I want you to pay attention to the little things. Yeah, those visual motifs. The recurring symbol. The connections between characters. And how he uses music. Sound design. Editing. To create a certain mood. Yeah, atmosphere. Yeah, those details often get missed the first time around. But they add so much depth. And enrich your understanding. Like, think about the spinning top in Inception. Oh, yeah. That's not just a cool visual. Yeah. It represents Cobb's inability to separate dreams from reality. Right. A constant reminder of his inner turmoil. And that ambiguity. That's genius. And an interstellar. Yeah. That ticking watch. Okay. It's not just telling time. No. It symbolizes how precious time is. The weight of separation. How every second counts. It's those subtle details. That make Nolan's films so much more than just entertainment. He uses every tool at his disposal. Yeah, the dialogue. The, the visuals. Well, though, to reinforce his themes. To create a truly immersive experience. That makes you think. Makes you feel. It's like peeling back the layers of an onion. You keep finding new depths. New complexities. And the more you explore his work, yeah. the more you realize how much there is to uncover. To think about. To discuss. It's the mark of a truly great filmmaker. Absolutely. Their films go beyond just entertainment. They spark conversations. Challenge our perspectives. And make us see the world differently. So I encourage you. Yes. Go back and watch these films. With fresh eyes. Armed with all the insights we've talked about. Yeah. Look for those hidden meanings. The thematic connections. Don't be afraid to question your own interpretations. And most importantly. Yeah. Enjoy the journey. As you go back to your own life. Yeah. Your own reality. Think about the themes we've discussed. Right. 
reality. So human condition. How do they connect with your own experiences? How do you perceive time? What sacrifices have you made for your dreams? What does it mean to live a meaningful life? In a world that can feel so chaotic. Hold on to these questions. Let them guide you. Remember, the search for meaning never really ends. And hopefully this deep dive has given you the tool to continue that search. Not just in Nolan's films. But in your own life, too. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Until next time. Keep questioning. Keep exploring. And keep searching for those connections. That help us understand that the world and ourselves